Okay, so there's more to this book. Perhaps I shall read a while. Fascinating. I have been looking into these natives. They live in a nearby village and, a very, and are a very small group, yet they seem to manage quite well. I had thought of them as quite an uncivilized tribe, but their movements are calculated and one can perceive a sense of careful organization in, in their tasks. Oddly enough, they seem to be very brutish and their aspect looks awful although I couldn't take a good look at their facial features as I followed one of them completely on my own, and it could have been dangerous getting any closer. Also, the village is poor and very rough, but some of the shacks leapt out as inviting or special. It made me very curious. I will try to come closer tomorrow. February 16th. My second expedition to the village of the natives has been failed by an unexpected problem at the bridge. I'm afraid it was due to a slight miscalculation on my part, an indication that I should be focusing more on the task at hand and put my sudden love for all African things aside for a moment. It was my fault and I accept it. February 20th. They're at it again, lurking beyond the forest. It's amazing how they have changed our perception of the surroundings. At first we were delighted by the quiet nature of the place. Now we fear what horrors might be concealed in that dark and foreboding cloak of trees. The tops loom above us, overshadowing the bridge, and strange noises haunt our meals. Even the river telling ungodly secrets. We could be, of course, a bit more sensitive towards distractions, but I can't help feeling the area has, in fact, become more sinister. And yet I'm still looking forward to satisfying my curiosity about the tribe. February 24th. At last, I've found something more about the neighboring tribe. This is an incredible finding, and I just can't withhold my excitement. Yay. Some elders at the local town happened to know about them, but only through stories they heard. The most surprising thing is that the tribe was assumed to be extinct long ago, but according to my vague descriptions, the elders think that we could be dealing with a legend here. Everything they ever learned of them was during their childhood when the tribe was stalking the town, much in the same way they have been stalking us. People used to call them... Dlaum. I can't really read that. Is that D apostrophe L H A U M Dlaum? As such was the sound of screams heard during late in the night. People screamed Dlaum. Don't know. <laughs> They'd come out into the streets and see an evil glitter atop a hill in the distance. Some would say it was a fire, others the cursed spirit of an ancient god. Whatever it was, they say the bright light amid these fantastic screams was bone chilling. The macabre scene would suddenly stop just as it had begun out of nowhere, never to be seen again in days to come. Intervals between these horrible nights became longer and longer. Until I yawned, oh my god. <laughs> Until they soon faded into oblivion. I will not make another Elder Scrolls reference. <laughs> I can't help it. Every time I read Oblivion, I'm just like, ooh, that's a cool game. I love playing Oblivion. I should play more Oblivion. Ugh. The tribe apparently had retreated back into obscurity until now. They were later known as the Dalamar, a rather more scientific name. Although none of the people I spoke with could possibly remember its origin. I find it extremely surprising that nobody has ever heard about this tribe with the exception of a few townspeople. They must be incredibly rare, and judging by the stories passed on from generations in the town, very old. February 27th. I will confess that I have become nearly obsessed with the strange tribe. I see them as the most prized goal of my appreciation towards all South African things. A dangerous yet irresistible reward. I feel as if they were my discovery. I simply have to study them again before leaving. I fear I won't have the chance to ever again. It has become an important goal of mine, even more important than finishing the bridge. Oh, so maybe that, uh... No. It doesn't seem like that kind of forest would be in Africa, but I was just thinking there was that photo of the bridge. Um, but I think that was the mansion in the background as well. March 4th. Finally, I have managed to see them. My god, what a disturbing spectacle! When we arrived, they were moving around the village very slowly, without speaking or communicating with each other. Each, <coughs> each minding his or her own business, completely alien to the rest of the world. I am going to get a drink of water. They were filthy looking, coarse and downright disgusting. I couldn't see any weapons, but they could have been stored somewhere. It was all very strange behavior in a tribe. They must be quite unique. 
Then, as if they had suddenly all become possessed by some wild spirit, they became oh, they began shaking spasmodically and screaming like mad. Some of them dropped to their knees and lifted their heads to the sky, eyes blank and moaning in an indescribable way. Two of them walked away, still in that monotonous and slow manner, and in a great contrast to the rest of the scene and to a shack. The next minute they brought out into the open an odd looking mask. Its shapes, colours and overall looks, while unsettling, were mesmerising, and I felt instantly hypnotised by it. It rendered my modest collection of African curiosities into dull and uninteresting items. The mask was very ominous, and the whole tribe seemed to greatly revere it. Soon they began to gather around it and move in circles, fluttering and chanting a guttural psalm. Judging by their motions and aspect of the whole ritual, it must have been some kind of war ritual. I'm not sure how to explain what happened next, as if I feel my pulse is already throbbing. Words fail me to recount the most disturbing thing I've ever witnessed. One of the male villagers walked into the middle near the mask by his own will. It was an almost automatic act. All of a sudden, the remaining members became silent. I can't tell for how long it lasted, but I was afraid to breathe. I think Dalby and the others were also scared. They wouldn't even blink. I remember being soaked wet and expectant. The silence was so unnatural. Then, a few members separated from the people circling the mask and jumped on the single villager, beating him to death. Sosa. To be completely faithful to the event, the small crowd tore him apart. They grabbed his legs in twos and threes and twisted them in a manner I dare not describe. His face was disfigured with their bare fingernails and teeth and the torso soon disappeared under the frenzied tangle of hands. In a matter of a few minutes, the villager was turned into a red sack of bones. Not one of the attackers had the compassion to snap his neck during the sickening process. All was very methodical, as if it was just another mundane task. The most terrifying aspect, though, was that the victim didn't even cringe. The silence was so deep, I could hear his flesh ripping. I would expect any living creature to scream its guts out in such a condition. I can't tell whether he was drugged or half asleep, but I did recognize him dancing like everybody else before walking into the middle of the circle. It was the most outrageous and sadistic sacrifice I've ever heard of. I don't think I will ever forget what I saw. My intentions of approaching further, even if they didn't have any weapons at hand, vanished. Those creatures, I dare not call them human beings, could have killed my whole company in the blink of an eye with their rage. They seemed to be completely out of themselves and willing to destroy anything in their plot, including destroy anything intruding into their path. While the images of the sacrifice still haunt my thought, I can't, still can't seem to forget that mask. It was so deceptively simple, and yet perfect in its design. I haven't seen anything like it. I surely would love to take a better look. I feel the Dalmar, dangerous as they are, could be the most important... A page been ripped out. The most important... Well, it looks like it. Because that's covering up. The, uh, some of the words there, so something's been ripped out. The most important ethical finding, ethnical finding, in decades. What I've seen today is crying out for some further investigation. I just can't leave them like that. I would never forgive myself. And that mask, that mask. I was ecstatic after reading the journal. The material was incredible. Anything else to say about it? The material was incredible. <sighs> Alright, well... I'll check the front gate. See if the electricians showed up. Ah, what's the time? I want to see the time. Still 11 o'clock. It's been 11 o'clock for like an hour! Alright. Ah, where's the Ford bit of Where's the Ford button? Still no sign of the electrician. Useless! Bloody useless. Ooh, a mailbox. Mr. Arthate. 
Mr. Carter sent me here today to fix a power problem in your residence. I was told to meet you at the gates, but I've been waiting a few minutes and still haven't seen any signs of you. I'll wait some more and then leave. Please contact Mr. Carter as soon as possible. Okay, so he's come and gone. Damn. Could have used that electricity. So I guess I gotta give Jerry a call, find out what the hell went on there. Why didn't Jerry tell me sooner? Carter Properties. Jerry, we have a problem. What happened? <sighs> the electrician missed me. He left a note in the mailbox. Bloody hell! He was supposed to meet you at the gates early this morning. I thought he was just being late. Damn, then I must have missed him for a few minutes. What the heck am I supposed to do now? Why don't you go check the fuses yourself? Maybe it isn't that serious. I don't know. I'm not very good with that kind of thing. Michael, even my grandmother could improvise a fuse. Just go and look, and let me know if you see anything burnt. <sighs> As in black spots? Yes, black spots. All right, I'm on it. Where the hell is the fuse box? I'm guessing the fuses are typically in the basement. Bollocks. Fuse box, eh? Okay, well, I don't know if uh, Victorian houses follow the same kind of design as slightly more modern houses, but our fuse box is outside. But then again, this is a different country. I don't know their practice of... Hmm. Yeah, no, it must be inside. Must be in the basement. Or in the attic. Gosh, I really just don't know. Or the kitchen? What would make sense? I don't know. It still doesn't provide me any story advances, so... Maybe it's at the back. I don't recall seeing anything fuse box-like. I'm not going to place it all the way out in the mausoleum. So I'll check the attic. Upstairs. Not on the game, mind. Someone's just come home. <laughs> fuse box, fuse box, fuse box. Was there a fuse box down here? I 
doubt the fuse box would be in the upstairs bathroom, but leave no stone unturned. I have not seen anything remotely resembling a fuse box. I have to find my way into the basement somehow. Fuse box here. Gotta be in the basement. I'm gonna go have a look at those masks just as a bit of a distraction. very much doubt that that guy managed to bring back the mask in question. If he did, it goes a long way to explaining any sort of weird shit that's going down in this house. No, it's just an elephant tapestry. So it is very simple. All these masks, they make me feel very uneasy. They seem to be guarding the room. That says the same thing. There's a mask missing. And I bet... That that's the mask from the village. Dear James, I'm going to make use of these resting moments to thank you once again for your kindness. Those shields that you have donated to us are wonderful. If it weren't for you, our section dedicated to African objects wouldn't be anything else other than a, other than a mere co collection of photographs. G -g -g -g. <laughs> photographs. Also, I've been looking into those Dalma you mentioned. I have to say, they seem to be rather fantastic. If it wasn't for your personal account of their activities, I would dismiss them as old wives' tales. I found a few books mentioning them, and I'd be very happy to lend them to you. They will be mailed at once. I hope you can satisfy your curiosity. It's 19th September, 1962. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Doesn't look like there's anything of worth there. Okay, well the books. There might be something to those books on the uh, on the desk. It doesn't help me with this bloody basement problem. Urgh. Still can't write. Didn't think I'd be able to. There has to be some key somewhere. It's the only key I can think of is that one that's stuck in the door upstairs. Never fancied naps. <laughs> what are you saying, man? Naps are awesome! Ooh. Why is it that I can't concentrate? Crumpling pages like this, I'm getting worse. I... The whisperings, they're killing me. They cannot be real. They cannot be real. Barred the doorway, but it can still hear them in my dreams. How to get rid of it? If it was only that simple, but tearing it apart would force me to admit the other world, its otherworldly nature. 
No, it just can't be possible. I can't allow these thoughts to cross my mind. But I can really hear them, so clearly. Have I really lost it? It just can't be that I'm experiencing exactly what James did. It has to be influence. How else to explain that every time I walk past the gallery, the whispers grow louder. They're luring me inside. It wants me closer. I can hear them again. Yes, the tortured souls of the fallen now suffering for eternity. A chant, next room. I know for sure it's source now. I can't fool myself any longer. Are those drums? Oh please, for Christ's sake, don't let it be drums. I have to document this. I have to keep going because if James was right, may God have mercy on our souls. Barred the doorway. Hmm, I wonder what had to stress the writer this much. Ah. I'm guessing that's the door in the attic that's stuck. And there's probably going to be a dude... Mm. No, that, that that wouldn't make sense. Why would he write something, leave it in that room, and then... bar himself in a room upstairs? I'm just not satisfied with the fact that there's nothing in this room. He doesn't want to go through a bunch of trinkets and perfumes. Logically, I mean, like, obviously in the game's not placing anything significant there because uh, it's not allowing us to access it, but it would seem that I'd be ripping through this place trying to find something in this situation. Well, actually, I'd probably be more like, fuck this, I'm kicking down the door to the basement. <laughs> Maybe Jerry will give me some insight into how to get into the basement. Bollocks. Okay, it's empty. Lame. It's rather subtle with its, uh... A boring tool. I'm sure it's quite interesting. <laughs> a boring tool. that allow me to... perhaps bore through that door in the attic? Worth a shot. Or through the hole in the, uh, the crack in the wall. I hate when it goes silent like this, it just suddenly everything becomes a whole lot more creepy. It's like anticipation. I had to have some means of retrieving the key. Um, so that means I need to quite a bit of light coming from below the door. So I need something to slide under there. 
pick up the key. So that's evidently how you get the key out. I'll check this. See if I can bore a hole in the wall for no apparent reason. Okay, not useful. Kind of expected they might have hid something in the walls, but hmm. Now I need an implement to slide under the door. What have I seen in the house? That that are scratches. That are definitely scratches. There's definitely stuff out there. I wonder if picking if I can pick that off, take that off again. No, I can't remove it. So I guess that was its only purpose. The broom's too fat. That's a trowel. I don't know how far beyond the door I need to actually reach. A pen? No. Hmm. All right. Well, uh, I'll have to leave that conundrum for another time because time is pressing on, and I have to get on with other things. So I have to leave it there. And upon reviewing this footage, maybe I'll work out uh, if there's something I can pick up. That will allow me to get through and pick up that um, key. <laughs> this game is somewhat addictive because I know I have other stuff to uh, to do, but I want to I want to keep playing and I want to try and figure out this damn puzzle. But it will have to wait. So, I hope you enjoyed this session. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll be back next time with more Scratches Blind Let's Play. So until then, have a good one, and I'll catch you guys later.